Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland Reviewer, and I'm here to do my next installment in my top 10 list, my series on my top directors, and this is number 4, we're getting there, and it's Quentin Tarantino. Now, Tarantino, along with George Miller, probably had the smallest repertoire of films out of the directors that I'm talking about on the, this list, with Quentin Tarantino only having 8 directing credits, well, eight films that he considers his films. And I am counting Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2 together because that's how he represents it. But Tarantino, what makes Tarantino so memorable as a director is he is such a fan of film. And you can tell that. And pop culture and everything. And it just injects into his films and creates these interesting hodgepodges of things that you wouldn't expect to work. But somehow he makes them work. And they're cool, they're slick, he goes too far sometimes, they're violent, they're gory, sometimes he goes too far with that. And all these different things of what he can do with a film and construct these stories, non-linear storytelling, and doing it so well and creating such interesting, weird stories but with such fantastic dialogue. The dialogue is so memorable in his films, and it's just basic conversations that make it so memorable, too. And you have these conversations, like the talking about waitresses and tips and reservoir dogs, or talking about foot massages and a royale with cheese from Pulp Fiction, and just all of these different things, these conversations that you can have. And sometimes it goes a little too far. I'll talk more about that when I talk about Death Proof, but in terms of what he's able to do with that dialogue is so memorable, and the characters he creates, and the casting that he does is so outside the box, and it works so well, and he really has those people that pop up that really do justice in his films. Now, to start off, where it started, Reservoir Dogs. This film that is completely non-linear, bouncing back and forth, set up like a play. And it's so engaging, so interesting. Whether it's them all sitting at the coffee table, talking about should you leave tips or not. And just with that, or the that story that Tim Roth, Mr. Orange, is trying to come up with. Just everything about it, all the characters... And the music. Music in a Tarantino film is amazing, so well chosen, so important to what's going on. And Reservoir Dogs, whether it's stuck in the middle with you, oh my god. Or just, and the hooked on a feelings in that film, and they just do such a great job. The, the hits of the 70s. And it's cool, it's different, it's interesting. These characters really stand out. The performances, Tim Roth, Harvey Keitel, Steve Buscemi, and James, I had, uh, Michael Madsen, so unnerving and creepy as Mr. Blonde. And just everything is fired on cylinders with this, and it's such an engaging story. And where this film goes, and the twists and turns, and what you don't expect, and really showing what Tarantino knows about graphic violence and how that can affect in a film is just boom hits you so hard then you have Pulp Fiction Pulp Fiction is one of the greatest indie films ever created with these crazy stories crazy characters from Jules and Vincent Samuel L. Jackson is so amazing in this film and he really was underappreciated the fact that he wasn't recognized for this film. And John Travolta, this comeback story after, like, the 80s not doing so well for him. Him coming back with this film really shot an arm into his, uh, shot something into his arm for his career. And the back and forth between the two of them. Bruce Willis as Butch and Ving Rhames as Marcellus Wallace. And it's infinitely quotable. There are moments where, like, there, there's some shades of where Quentin Tarantino goes a little too far, especially with his character and him throwing on the N-word a lot in it and his bad acting. Tarantino should not be in his own movies, but he keeps doing it. 
and that's one part that takes away but it's so balanced with the wolf Harvey Keitel so great in that film and showing up in 12 minutes and that's the, such a great thing is everything's so memorable in his films even a tiny role like Christopher Walken is like I had this watch hidden up my ass and just like him popping up for that scene is just like what is he doing here how do you get Christopher Walken for this and just stuff like that the music uh, Miserlo, the great surf rock going on there, and everything just hits. And then, like, I could gush about Pulp Fiction so much, and the briefcase. What's in that briefcase? Does it really matter? That speech by Jules at the end is one of my favorite things to listen to in any film. And for the wallet that says badass mother effer on it. And it's just like, everything is so on point. Then you have something like Jackie Brown, which does not get enough credit. Love that film. Samuel L. Jackson, great. Pam Greer coming out of nowhere and just delivering a great, great performance. Robert Forrester, great performance as the Battle of Bonds and Max Cherry. And not a huge fan of De Niro in this film. Really don't like his character. But it's just... A lot of things really, really work well in this film, and it's so crazy seeing something like this in the 90s, that this was made in the 90s, and Tarantino makes this effortlessly cool, the music, the everything, the Delphonics, and 8K47, if you need to uh, kill every mother effer in the room, except no substitutes. Stuff like that. Who comes up with lines like that? And who comes up with them and then Samuel Jackson can make them work? That's the big thing. Jackie Brown is... It's a long film, like a lot of Tarantino films, but it's so worth the effort of sitting down and really taking it in. The whole atmosphere, the music. Michael Keaton! Michael Keaton's in this movie, and he's great in like a smaller role as this police officer, and it's just so great. Tarantino really knows how to take pulp, cul uh, pop culture, anything, music, and really inject it into a film and bring it so much life. Then you have Kill Bill, which is a love letter to so many different things. Tarantino literally animates a scene in that film like an anime. Because why the hell not? And there's some parts in it that don't work so well and drag a bit or... But there's so many things going on in that film that works so well. The choreographed fighting, the oh, the Crazy 88, that fight scene, and the fact that it has to go black and white because there's way too much blood and gore in it. It was so great. I love the music choices in that with um, Nancy Sinatra and Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood that uh, like Spanish cover of it so great the fights everything is the fighting is so great this homage to old kung fu films and you can tell that Tarantino loves them so much and then you get the second part where it's a lot more talking and a lot less action but it still works so well with Pai Mei these confrontations with these crazy characters performance by Uma Thurman, Daryl Hannah, Michael Madsen David Carradine as Bill and that monologue he has about Clark Kent and Superman is so great. I love it and that was written so well and how that that film this film does not end how you expect it to end and I think that's one of the most compelling things about it. Then you have something like Death Proof which there's parts of Death Proof that I love. Kurt Russell eats up Tarantino film. I love it. Him and Stuntman Mike is so memorable, so great. It's like, though so which way are you going, honey? Left or right? And she says, right, like, too bad. Because the thing is, if you would have said left, it would have taken you a lot longer to figure out that something was up. 
But the thing is, I have to take you left. So you better get scared right now. And it's just like him eating it up and so great. Where his character goes is another thing. And a lot of his dialogue in this film is trying to capture all these women talking with each other. And I don't know how authentic or real this really feels. It's interesting Tarantino trying to capture that coming from his perspective. And of course he did it. And Death Proof was a bit of a miss. I still, I'll still watch it. I still enjoy it, but it's definitely not a great film. And then, honestly, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say this, what I think is Tarantino's best film is Inglorious Bastards. This film, when he started to get that taste of period pieces, and he's just been on it since, unbelievable. This film, from that opening scene is one of the most tense, well-written sequences in film. Absolutely love it. And then you have Christoph Waltz, who is amazing in Tarantino films. And he's having trouble fitting in elsewhere, but I think he really found his niche working with Tarantino as Hans Landa is unbelievable in this film. The music choices, whether it's taking Ennio Morricone f tracks and putting them in, or any other, like, Cat People by David Bowie, such a strange choice, but I think it really works well. And then the young actress who plays Shoshana is so great. She really stands out in this film. And then, then you have Brad Pitt. And Lieutenant Aldo Rain. We're in the Nazi killing business. And business is a booming. And then just like, I speak Italian best. I will be your escort. And just, he is, I love when Brad Pitt is playing quirky and different because that's where he really owns it. I'm okay with him being like the normal leading man. He can do that. But when he has stuff to work with that's really outside the box, he eats it up and does such a great job, and I love him in this film. Michael Fassbender, my first time really seeing him in something, loved him in this film. Mike Myers pops up randomly, and Rod Taylor from The Time Machine playing Winston Churchill. Just all of that working so well, just everything that pops up. And Samuel L. Jackson as a narrator, talking about Hugo Stiglitz. And all of that, they, who they got to portray Hitler was fantastic, <laughs> him yelling about the bear Jew, and just everything that is in this film, it's super serious, and also crazy funny at points, and it's such a compelling, interesting story of like, what would really happen if th this was what happened, and people coming up with theories that this is the alternate history of all Tarantino films like Hitler dies in a movie theater that's why everyone's obsessed with pop culture and stuff like that it's an interesting theory I'm not going to put any thought really into it but this film is so great from start to finish it feels a lot more mature than some of his other films and it feels like this is really go, gunning after some serious thoughts Daniel Bruhl I keep forgetting people because there's so many great performances in this. And he's great. Really made him a star to stick out in other films. And then we got Django Unchained. And now he's making crazy over-the-top spaghetti westerns. And Jamie Foxx, fantastic in this. Really owns it. And Christoph Waltz is great. Don Johnson popping up as Big Daddy, a plantation owner. It's like, what the hell's going on here? The casting Jonah Hill as a random Klansman with his hood and stuff like that. Like Baghead number two, I think that was the name of his character. Walton Goggins pops up and really makes a name for himself in this and then the Hateful Eight. And Leo. Leo was a revelation in this film. I had never seen him like this before as Calvin Candy. And he was terrifying. And then Samuel L. Jackson popping up as um, Stephen is fantastic I have to say the very like the last there's a big sequence towards the end where this really kills it for me for a, like it dies down 
with all Australians and why the hell did Quentin Tarantino cast himself as an Australian? And he's like doing his really awful Australian accent and it's just like, what the hell are you doing? What was the point of this? That really didn't work for me. That scene really took me out of the movie, but everything else, using like the gangster rap and everything, the shootout at Candyland and the crazy amount of blood and guts in this film, like Franco Nero, the original Django popping up for a random cameo, just the visuals too, and that's such a thing about Tarantino, he always has striking cinematography in his films. And that scene where you meet uh, Calvin Candy and the smoke's coming up, and he like turns around and he's just like, and it's just so perfect. And how that all connects back with themes of them trying to save Broomhilda from the dragon, the smoke coming out of his mouth, it's great imagery. Tarantino really knows how to put together a film. And this may be crazy, but Hateful Eight is my favorite Tarantino film, and I love this film. It is very long. It is can be slow and drawn out, but the thing is, I eat it all up. The performances in this are so crazy, over-the-top, fantastic, from Kurt Russell as John Roof the Hangman, and Samuel L. Jackson as Marquise Warren, and Daisy Domergu, Jennifer Jason Lee is so fantastic and just despicable. And this film takes some crazy turns, unexpectedly great use of music. Ennio Morricone's score is amazing. And I'm so glad he finally won an Oscar for this film. But what Tarantino does with this and that 70 millimeter sh um, shooting is so claustrophobic, so interesting. These crazy characters, some of them aren't as interesting as I would have liked for like something like these are the eight characters you're going to get stuck with. Wasn't a big fan of the cow puncher Michael Madsen's character. Tim Roth was entertaining enough in it. Uh, like Damian Bashir was a great surprise like Mexican Bob and Mr. Squinty because he doesn't actually like look out of like he never fully opens his eyes like this whole entire movie. And just the interactions between everyone, Bruce Dern is great. Walton Goggins is a revelation, and I love how he gets such a big part of this. And this, this film solidifies why I love Kurt Russell so much. And that's the thing, that's what Tarantino does. He gets this interesting collection of actors, puts them in a film, and makes them really work so well together, and makes something so special. The unexpectedness, the craziness, the over-the-topness... This is such a great looking western too. The cinematography is just amazing. I love it. Tarantino is like the cool director for film nerds. Is Tarantino cool? No. He thinks he is. He's not cool. But to a film nerd who loves film, he is what you want to dream of being. He made it. He was, he worked at a video store until his late twenties. He made it into Hollywood, creating things so unabashedly his, while pulling so many things from so many different places and influences, they're so poppy with everything really filling into it, and people will argue that his films really aren't original, because he's drawing so much from everything else, but the thing is, he's synthesizing things, he's taking what he's learned from all these different things and creating something unique and new and different from it and it's so compelling I do have to say he gets a little much with his use of the n-word and him feeling comfortable being able to do that I will not argue about the use of the n-word in Django Unchained or the Hateful Eight seeing as they took place in the Old West people were racists and said those things a lot so it's like okay him using it so willy-nilly in like Pulp Fiction and stuff that is really big turn off and him feeling so comfortable being able to use that but Tarantino is so great I love his films honestly watch all of them even Death Proof check it out and just see all the craziness these concoctions that he's able to come up with and please keep coming back and checking out I only have three more left 
and we're getting towards the end of this countdown and I'm getting very very excited because now I'm getting in the territory where it's like I am love these directors and whatever they whenever they come out with new stuff is an event for me except the next one unfortunately he doesn't come out with any more films but that's a little hint to you and keep on supporting your wasteland reviewer